Number one, do not tell anyone that you are working on prosperity from a spiritual mental approach. If you do, you will break the connection and drain the power building up in and around your new mental equivalent. Secrecy is an absolute essential. Number two, understand that you're not trying to make anything happen. You are simply releasing the abundance that is already a part of your true nature. Eliminate all pressure and intensity. Let the substance flow into visibility and experience. Easy does it. Number three, as your good begins to materialize, don't get puffed up with spiritual pride. Remember, you are not doing the work. It is spiritual substance that is interpreting itself as the fulfillment of your desires, and you are but the channel for its outpouring. Number four, critical thoughts and feelings of fear will hold back your good, while a consciousness of love and a consciousness of trust will speed up the flow. Love is the fulfillment of the law, and faith is the energy that clears the channel. Number five, acknowledge the spirit within you as the one source of abundance, the one source of your supply. Look only to God for your prosperity. Number six, do not outline the way your good is to come forth. Let the Spirit surprise you with its delightful ways of showering you with abundance. Number seven, recognize that it is the will of God for you to be wealthy. Understand that there is not anything that even resembles lack or limitation or poverty in His consciousness. You were born to be rich. You are the offspring of the infinite abundance of the universe. And number eight, don't delay your demonstration by holding in mind the idea of receiving your good tomorrow. God works in the now. Now. Now is the accepted time. If you live always in the future, your prosperity will always be one day ahead of you. Number nine, abundance in the physical world is an outpicturing of a prosperity consciousness. So work from within. The higher your consciousness, the greater your prosperity. As above, so below. As within, so without. Number 10. Gratitude and thanksgiving are vital ingredients in developing a prosperity consciousness. Nothing opens the door to the storehouse as quickly as a thankful heart. Number 11. You develop a prosperity consciousness by changing your mind, by replacing ideas of lack with ideas of abundance. So spend more time each day thinking about what you want rather than what you do not want. You do not want lack, so stop thinking about it. And number 12. Keep your money circulating. If you hoard it for a rainy day, you may have to spend it all on an ark. To give you further assistance along the way, remember that there are four bodies that make up your individual being. The spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical bodies. 
The spiritual self, of course, is the center of the abundance activity. It is the divine consciousness that is constantly expressing from mind to manifestation its true nature of abundance. This Christ self is ever acting, so we let it function according to principle. In working with the emotional body, the most efficient way is to constantly pour out the energy of unconditional love through our feeling nature, to love everyone without exception and with no strings attached. This is truly the fulfilling of the law of prosperity. Regarding the mental body, we use our thinking minds to remind ourselves of the truth that the principle of abundance is forever active within the I am of us. So we can say without hesitation or without reservation, I am abundance. I am abundance. And we keep this thought fixed in our mind. Our work in living the law of prosperity on the physical plane deals primarily with giving so that the stream of substance is always flowing freely. Now this can be a real turnoff for some people. Let me give you an example. Jan and I grew up in the traditional churches and we were constantly hounded to give until it hurts. We were told that by supporting the church with our tithes we could one, earn our place in heaven and two, have a deduction on our tax return at the end of the year, thus covering all the bases. And later, when we moved into metaphysics, we understood tithing to be a fail-safe scheme to get rich quick. Now, based on the principles of abundance that we've just discussed, you can see that this approach to giving, with the emphasis on the getting, is not in keeping with the consciousness of abundance. In fact, giving to get pulls consciousness down from the spiritual level and plugs us right back into materiality. Let me explain it this way. If you tithe, and I really prefer the word sharing to tithing, as a mechanical and calculated method to please God, unload guilt, meet a sense of obligation, and play a bartering game with the law, no one benefits, not even the receiver. However, if you share your good with others out of a loving and giving consciousness, then watch out, because the law is going to overwhelm you with a pressed down and multiplied return, but always in direct relationship to the spirit in which the gift was given. Sharing from the heart with great joy and love will throw open the windows of heaven with a blast, but give with a cold, something I should do attitude and you'll have to use a crowbar to pry the windows open. Now, Jan and I have experimented with the sharing concept for years, and let me give you what we've personally discovered. Number one, giving on the physical plane can be the fastest way known to man to get untracked from financial lack if it's done with overflowing love and joy and a sense of fun. And number two, the habit of giving regularly is simply a tool to help you develop a giving consciousness. Number three, it is difficult to develop a true giving consciousness if money is the only thing you have in the house. Don't forget to also give your love, your gratitude, your inspiration, your time, your energy, your goodwill, your very self.